In this video, External Interrupts and Microcontroller AT89S52 is demonstrated using assembly programming. This microcontroller has two external interrupts, namely Interrupt 0 and Interrupt 1. The AT89S52 microcontroller handles five different types of interrupts. Two external interrupts, two timer interrupts, and one serial interrupt. In today's video, we'll focus on external interrupts, namely interrupt 0 and interrupt 1, which are located at pins 12 and 13, respectively. The vector address of interrupt 0 is 3 hexadecimal, and for interrupt 1, it's 13 hexadecimal. These addresses must be inserted within the assembly code so that the assembler program knows where to jump when the interrupt occurs. There are three special function registers related to external interrupts. We have the interrupt priority register, interrupt enable register, and timer and counter register. We can set the priority of all of the interrupts within the microcontroller by using the interrupt priority register. So if we set the bit here, then we are giving interrupt 0 the highest priority. If we set this bit here, then we are giving interrupt 1 the highest priority. This bit is related to timer 0 interrupt. This bit is for timer 1 interrupt, while this bit is for the serial interrupt. As an example, if we want to give interrupt 0 the highest priority over all of the other interrupts, then this is the assembly instructions we need to put in our code. Before we can use any of the interrupts, we need to enable it. And this is done through the interrupt enable register. So this bit, when set, will enable interrupt 0. And this bit will enable interrupt 1. And this bit here will enable the interrupt for timer 0. And this one is for timer 1. And this one is for the serial interrupt. And this bit here will enable the global interrupt or all interrupts. So, as an example, if we want to use interrupt 0 and interrupt 1 in our program, then these are the instructions we need to put in the code. Finally, we need to determine how the external interrupts are triggered through the external signal. And this is done by programming the timer counter register. A logic 1 here means that interrupt 0 will be triggered by using a trailing edge pulse. And a logic 0 means that a low-level signal will trigger the interrupt. And the same applies for interrupt 1. So if we want to uh, trigger the two interrupts by using a trailing edge pulse, then these are the assembly instructions. The assembly code needed for using interrupt 0 is shown here. We start with the origin directive, where we define the vector address of interrupt 0. And then we have the absolute call, which is uh, executed whenever there is an interrupt signal coming at uh, pin 12. So the program will then jump to this label, which is interrupt service routine. And here at ISR label, the uh, subroutine is executed. And the subroutine must be terminated with this uh, instruction, which is return from interrupt, where the program will then come to the statement immediately after the uh, absolute call. A block diagram to demonstrate external interrupt is shown here. We have two push buttons connected to pins interrupt 0 and interrupt 1. We have two LEDs and a buzzer connected to uh, pins of uh, port 1. The operation of the system is as follows. When there is no external interrupt, these two LEDs will alternate in turning on and off. When we press this button, interrupt 0 will be generated triggering the buzzer, and the blue LED will blink 15 times very fast. When the interrupt finishes, normal execution resumes where the two LEDs will alternate in turning on and off. When we press this button, interrupt 1 will be generated, triggering the buzzer, and the red LED will blink fast 15 times. At the end of the interrupt, these two LEDs will alternate in turning on and off. The microcontroller is programmed so that interrupt 0 has a higher priority than interrupt 1. 
So while entrop 1 is being serviced by the microcontroller, during which if entrop 0 occurs, it will immediately cancel entrop 1 and the program will execute uh, the service for entrop 0 since it has a higher priority than entrop 1. The next video clip will demonstrate all of this. This is a circuit diagram of the implemented system which can be obtained from the link provided at the video description. A quick look at the assembly code. We begin with the origin directive where we define the starting address of the main program and then we need to jump to the main program. We jump to label main where the main program begins. Now without this jump instruction what will happen is that the assembler will go directly to these instructions which are related to the external interrupts and these instructions will only be seen whenever there are external interrupts so that's why we need this jump instruction here. Inside the main routine and using the set bit instruction these two instructions will enable interrupt 0 and interrupt 1 to be triggered on falling edge pulses. This instruction will give entrop 0 the highest priority. This instruction will enable entrop 0. This will enable entrop 1. And this will enable entrop all. Next we turn off the buzzer. And then we turn on the blue LED and uh, turn off the red LED. We set up a counter that will loop 12 times. And then we apply a delay. And then we turn off the blue LED and turn on the red LED we apply another counter and another delay and then we jump to the main again and the loop continues while there is no external interrupts and what we have here is that the two LEDs will start alternatingly turn on and off while the program is running in the main routine if interrupt 0 is triggered the program will immediately stop and jump to the vector address of interrupt 0 which is defined here and then the program will see this uh, absolute call to this uh, label which is the interrupt service routine 1 and the program will then jump to this uh, subroutine which is here and the contents of this subroutine are executed inside subroutine ISR1 the red LED will be off the blue LED and the buzzer will turn on a delay will be applied and then we turn off the blue LED and the buzzer a delay will be applied and this continues 15 times so what we have here is a loop that will loop 15 times where the buzzer and the blue LED will be on and off when this is over the program will see this instruction return from interrupt where the program will jump back to the instruction immediately after the absolute call instruction which is short jump to main and we're back in the main routine. In a similar fashion while the code is running in the main routine if interrupt 1 occurs the program jumps to the vector address of interrupt 1 which is defined by this origin directive and then the program will call and jump to the interrupt service routine 2 where the code within is executed and the red LED blinks 15 times and then the interrupt return occurs where the program returns to the instructions immediately after the call instruction which is here and the main routine code resumes execution. Once we have the assembly code the next step is to generate the hexacode using the Kale IDE. Please watch my previous video where I give step-by-step -step instructions on how to do this. The final step is to load the hexacode onto the microcontroller. 
by using a CMD program. Again, all of this is explained in my previous video. In a future video, timer 0, timer 1, and serial interrupts will be demonstrated. Thank you for watching.